Welcome to the Rowan Country Podcast in English. Brought to you by the Tourist Office of the Pontivy Region. Today, Sharon is going to tell us what she does during her lunchtime in Pontivy. Hello, it's Sharon, the lady who sells the train tickets at the Tourist Office shop in Pontivy, opposite the barge, the Duchess Anne. If you listened to me before, I told you that I was very lucky to work in Pontevy. But somebody asked me the other day, you must get bored of the town if you're there every day. Well, no. Lunch times are a decent length here. We get an hour and a half, so there's plenty of time to explore after lunch. OK, sometimes my explorations are inside the restaurants, but I work at the tourist office, so I've got to try them out occasionally, haven't I? Anyway, when the weather is good, it'd be a shame not to take a walk into town or along the canal. So today I'm going to take you on a virtual walk of just part of the town. It's a compact town with lots to see, but to be honest, to do it as quickly as I'm about to, teleportation would have to be invented first. So, in the meantime, let's pretend we're just very fast walkers. So starting from the boutique kind of have to until the teleportation thing arrives. But why wouldn't you? It's an interesting building in itself, an old octroi. A waybridge, the building where goods arriving in Pontevy by canal would be checked and taxed. Opposite is the red, white and black of the tourist office barge. But the glittering water of the blave and the colours of the flowers that deck the railings and the bridges will have to wait for another day. Turning my back on them, I walk up Rue Friedland, a dividing line between the old town and the 19th century Pontevy, called at various times in history Napoleonville. On my right is the post office, a rather gloomy looking building from the 1960s. Not a decade famed for its architecture, but apparently there's more to it than that. Behind it is the old tribunal, the courtrooms of the 19th century. And the prison was built at the back of the courtrooms. The current post office building replaced it. The prison wasn't meant to be an attractive place, and this building, it seems, has been built in the same sombre style. To the left, spirits are lifted by the view of the parish church of Our Lady of Joy. Notre Dame de Choix. Paid for by that famous local family, the Dukes of Rouen and the garden in front of it full of flowers, trees, benches and even a water feature. Now hang on a minute, what's this column? A memorial of some sort? Well, of some sort. In fact, it was put there in 1890 to commemorate the 100-year anniversary of the Fête de la Fédération, a sort of big party that took place after the French Revolution on the 14th of July, and the idea of which started here in Pontevy. Why not visit yourself to find out the details? As I pass the door of the church, I can see carved diamond shapes in the stone around it. Those Rowan Dukes really like to let everyone know who was responsible for the great buildings. But just across from here is another smaller church, and that reminds us that the Rowans weren't the first to see Pontevy as a strategically important place. It's the Church of St. Evie. the monk who arrived here in the 7th century from Lindisfarne and gave Pontevi its name. Again, sorry, no time to explain. You really will have to visit, won't you? So from here, up through Rue du Pont, or Bridge Street, which makes it sound far less interesting than it really is, we arrive in the Place du Martre. But while waiting for the teleportation device, we're going to also have to wait for a time machine. Well, we don't really need it. We can imagine the medieval markets and fairs that would have been held here. Or see a vision of the wrongdoer in the stocks. Or maybe even the flashing blade of the guillotine. No need to imagine the porch house. That remains. 
all the half-timbered houses, they're still here. Even more of them in Pontevi than many other towns. I've been told it's 40, but I've never counted them. Now they house little shops, many of them independents, and we can admire the coloured facades, even if at lunchtime they aren't all open. That's just as well, really. But I can always come back after work if I'm too tempted. So then there's a choice. Up to the castle, a circuit, and back to work. Or over to the 19th century side of town, Napoleonville. So named due to Napoleon I's influence here. Another person who recognised the importance of this town. And thanks to whom many of the buildings, and indeed the canal, exist. But that's a whole other story. So it'll have to wait for another time. Even with teleportation, there's just too much to share all in one go.